Assalamu alaikum. In this video, we will talk about what is information security hardening and we'll look at it in a little bit more detail. Now, let's talk about IT assets. What is an IT asset? An IT asset can be any network, systems, application, database, mobile, or physical security device or asset. For example, a router is an IT asset. For example, a server is an IT asset. For example, a printer is an IT asset. And these are all, a database would be an IT asset. An application is an IT asset. Even a head of security or an IT staff member is an IT asset. So those are IT assets. And security hardening is the process of configuring IT assets, adjusting IT assets to maximize security of the IT asset and minimize security risks associated with those IT assets. What is information security in the trenches? So security in the trenches is an important term which is used by Delta Tech, which is my consulting company. And security in the trenches is something we talk about a lot because that is something we find missing in Pakistan. Security in the trenches consists of security at the most important fundamental operational layer where it matters the most and where it really counts the most and usually but not always involves junior staff who need extra guidance, training and scrutiny. For example, an engineer who is operating a Windows Server 2012 operating system and is a junior engineer who has just been recruited six months ago, when that person is configuring the server and is operating the server, that is security in the trenches because that is where the IT staff member is working on the server and everything that that staff member does will impact the security of that device and eventually of the organization. Now, for information security hardening, our organization, Delta Tech, has developed an eight-step process. And I'm happy to share that process with you. First of all, what we do is we identify critical assets and all the IT assets and the asset owner as well. Then we research on the applicable security controls, and those could come from DISA, and we will talk about that later on in the course, or from Center for Internet Security, or any other benchmark for the particular IT asset. Finally, what we do in step number three, we develop a checklist of the applicable controls after we have thoroughly gone through and researched that what are the applicable security controls for that IT asset. In step number three, we develop a checklist. In step number four, we document the controls in a SOP or standard operating procedure so that whenever we are going to do this the next time, it is documented and the engineers will follow every time the same way. Number five, we implement the controls in a test setup first and not in the production environment to make sure that the controls are all implemented properly. Number six, the validation is conducted in the test setup for the controls on that particular IT asset. Have all the controls been implemented or not? That's what we check. Number seven, we conduct a change management process because we are going to move the controls now to the production environment. And in step number seven, we actually implement in step number eight, we implement on the production environment and then monitor. So the question is, why is security hardening at the first step in the security transformation model? Why not at step number two, three, or four? Why is it the first step? And the reason is that security hardening is also called security in the trenches and consists of the basic security settings. The basic security settings, which are fundamental, and that's where the journey of security begins. If you don't do those first, nothing really matters that you do later on. If not adequately addressed here, rest of the security measures hardly matter. That's why we have security hardening at the first, very first step of the security transformation model. And that's where we should put the emphasis and the efforts first. Let's take a short example of Cisco router security hardening. So we could have a Cisco core router a 7200 core router device, and um, it has a configuration, and we have to harden the configuration, and there's a URL at the bottom of the screen on the right, and you can see that um, Cisco provides this, the router hardening checklist. And what activities will we do for hardening? 
For remote access, we will, do, we will conduct this through secure shell and we will disable Telnet because Telnet is insecure and secure shell is secure. We will turn off all unused services and we will make sure there is a session timeout and password retry lockout. And when I say we will turn off all unused services, we will shut down all the ports and services such as the web service or the DNS service or any other service which we are not using because those extra services can be used by attackers to penetrate into the system and take access, unauthorized access of the device. And, and finally, I was talking about session timeout and password retry lockout. So if somebody does not have the password and is trying through brute force mechanism to break it into the device and gain unauthorized access to the device, the device will automatically lock out after, let's say, five invalid attempts. This one is an example of Cisco router hardening, but you can look at the URL and there is a lot of detail that Cisco itself provides. That's all that we have for this video. Thank you.